Are you a prepper or homesteader looking to connect with like-minded people in your area? Looking to start your own preparedness group? Already have a group? Well, look no further than PrepperNet. PrepperNet is dedicated to personal responsibility, individual freedoms, and being self-reliant. PrepperNet has monthly meetings in over 100 cities where you can meet and learn with like-minded people in your area. PrepperNet, where preppers unite. Find us online at PrepperNet.com. Survive. Thrive. Stay alive. It's time to get prepared with the Prepping Academy Podcast. Hey, welcome to the Prepping Academy. I'm Forrest. Oh, and I'm Kyle. Yeah, that's where you jump in. <laughs> You're supposed to introduce me. That's how this and, works. And sitting to, well, across from me, actually, which is yeah. kind of odd. Um, it's Kyle. Yeah. It's Kyle. No excitement. It's Kyle. Well, we've had some excitement. So, oh, this show. This, sh- I mean, you, you're really looking forward to this show. What you, show? The one we were getting. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you're going to get some things off your chest. Uh, yeah. It's going to be like a Kyle rant. It's going to be a rant show. Yeah, just just ranting. I got a couple. You've got at least one. I, I think I sent you like three pages at one point. It was. And you're going to I probably read them. Yeah, yeah. Not in entirety, because there was okay. one part that you said was a little preachy that got off on a rant and may have sounded like something Stalin would have said or something like that. But <laughs> no. So this is going to be a rant show. And first we're going to talk, let's talk about the virus. So the last few weeks we've had... Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy. We've had the Dr. Hatfield, which is a leading, what do you, what do you call it? Virologist. Yes. Yeah. Studying viruses. So we've had that. Been, we've talked a lot about it. But, man, people are dying. There's over 400 deaths now. I don't know. There's, well, I mean, it's not how many they say there are, but how many bodies have oh, they yeah. burned to and Stuff like that. Because there are reports. I, I read today that there was someone who got arrested because they were recording something. And I saw that too. put that out. So. He went into the hospital and recorded the dead bodies. And they arrested him. He's going to die. I mean, they're going to kill him well, over there. Well, there, there are, literally are concentration camps over there. We know that. So, right. I mean. Yeah, probably. But don't you think that we can isolate it by not letting any more in America? You know, had who actually taken... Who? 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 <laughs> yeah. It's like an owl. <laughs> had they taken more action and had they called it early on and had the Chinese officials actually came out and said, like, hey, you guys need to start wearing masks. A lot of people said that it wasn't until the 25th or 26th that they even started seeing people wearing masks. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing that alarms me about this virus is, and, I, and I, I've actually done the research i've actually read like reports from john hopkins and wow. other places i know i actually get into stuff you actually prepared for I'm a not show just a conspiracy nut yeah no I've, I've been this way for years but they said that there were four proteins from the hiv virus that they actually found inserted into this virus which a coronavirus would not have those for any given reason the other part of it is an interesting follow-up to that is thailand some of the doctors there after reading this report actually treated one of their patients with i believe two anti hiv drugs and within 48 hours the infection cleared up and that was the only thing they used to treat them i i read the same thing you read yeah uh that they found these the hiv in there and that a lot of people think that it's weaponized this is a weaponized now even um What's that page we read all the time? Uh, the Liberty. Not Daily? the Drudge. The not, Liberty. No, the other one. Open or, gosh, I can't Zero remember. Zero Hedge? Zero Hedge. Yeah. Actually had that story on their their site, but they did go back in and change some of it. The guy that wrote it changed it. He wasn't 100% sure, but he was leading, because the first time he, he wrote it, he he was really saying this is a weaponized well, virus. I think part of that, I, I know Zero Hedge also got banned from another social media. 
they were saying that they were harassing or something like that. And it's, it's kind of like, okay, well, was it because you called this out? Because you've called plenty of other things out right. over the years. So now you mentioned this, and at the same time, you get banned from Twitter or whatever else. Well, I think if we stop anyone else coming into from the United into the United States, I think we can pretty much manage it, don't you think? Well, what happens whenever it comes to someone who sneaks across the border and doesn't know they have it? Because a lot of Chinese actually come in across the border. Right. Or what happens to the person who purposely gets infected, right, and tries to bring it into the country? It did transfer to another spouse. I read that. No. Well, I think we're up to 11 cases, I want to say, in the U.S. right now. Which is kind of crazy that of all the people in America that were in China, that 11 people actually got it. I think they must have spread it on the plane. Well, but here's the thing. If you were on a plane with X amount of people and there's an 8 to 14 day incubation rate where you're asymptomatic. Right. Then they obviously spread it to other people. Where are those other people at? Because you can't just tell me, oh, they just were on a plane by themselves and then isolated themselves in their bedroom. But they all didn't go to the same place in the same market and eat the same cheese or whatever. Well, no, that's why we know we, we know it's nonsense. I mean, it literally comes out of an area where they just got the rights to have, what was it, like a level four containment facility right. to actually study some of the world's most dangerous viruses. Right. Yep. Uh, it's kind of like a given. And you know what? No one's talked about. What happened to all the protests going on? They're not protesting now. No, they're not. A lot of things have changed in China because of that. And Hong Kong as well. Yeah. And, and I mean, beyond that, how much does this... It, it could even be an economic play. I hate to say that. Mm. But obviously, it affects the world markets. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, anything else on the virus? Did you Have you bought any... Thing for the virus. I already had protect stuff. Your... I already had yeah, that's, stuff. that's the thing. I see that all the N95 masks are being sold and you know, are sold out. The only thing I did do, and I I bought some and had some sent to my mom. Okay. Because yeah. I have, you know, for my family and at the retreat and get to the retreat, I have enough. And I've had it for years. I mean, as a prepper, and and the great thing about a pandemic, that's one of the cheapest things to prepare for. You Tyvek suits, gloves, booties, goggles, N95, N100 mask. That's a couple hundred bucks. I'll be honest, though. Here's the one thing with a pandemic. A pandemic actually bothers me more than most scenarios because, number one, you're dealing with an infectious disease. And especially one that if it does carry out for that long and you don't know that someone has it, it could very easily be infected. Number two, what happens whenever, say, like we're in a situation like where China is right now? Those people don't have food. I mean, the True. government might be supplying food. That's the problem. People, I mean, you can isolate it by just sending everyone into their home. Yeah. But the problem is they got to go out and get food or medicine or or. It creates a huge economic disparity, but at the same point, it also allows the government to completely control everything. Because if you do happen to wander out and you're trying to get to your bug out location or whatever, whoop, you're going to a camp. Ain't that what 5G's for? No, I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> That's... we're not even going to talk about 5G right now. <laughs> I had to bring that up. We're not going to talk Kyle about Kyle and I were eating barbecue, and I got 5G on my phone, and I'm like, it is oh my eerily goodness. close to where I live. It is really close. And it has close. no reason to be there. It has none. It's not near the... It's not like, like so right the in the major part of the city. government can control your mind. No. So they can lower my sperm count. No. <laughs> no, that's not what it is. Do you care about that at this age? No. I mean, <laughs> no. But the thing of it is... The I mean, 5G, you are 68. Yeah, funny. <laughs> the 5G still, to me, represents something that... We know the patent behind the technology is used for controlling crowds. Right. We'll say that. Sound. Yeah. Or. It's a radio frequency. Um, yeah, yes. Yeah. So even if it's dulled down, obviously mm. it has some sort of health effect to it. That's interesting. Yeah, that's one of the conspiracy theories I really don't get into. But but back to preparing for the pandemic. $200, you can have your entire suit for the entire family. It's not expensive. Yeah. Tyvek suits, they're 10 bucks. Booties, goggles, 
a box of N95 masks were, were 20 bucks. I don't know what they are well, now. Here's the thing. You do have to do a little bit of research because if you're looking at Tyvek, not all of it's created equally. Right. You could be looking at one that's 5 $6, mm-hmm. but it's only meant for dust. It's not meant for organic right. vapors and stuff right. like that. True. And then maybe some antibiotics, fish and I mean, 300 bucks for the whole family. You I, can, see, I wouldn't even go antibiotic route because antibiotics aren't working on it. If I were going to do anything. Well, you don't. Yeah, that's true. But you don't. That's this particular virus. You don't know what's coming down the road. Oh, well, for it. Yeah. But in general, for the coronaviruses and stuff yeah. like that. And I've, I've even seen where they've told a number of companies that they have on there, like, we'll treat this coronavirus, mm-hmm. the COV or whatever it is. Right. Um, they're like, no, pull that off the shelf because you can't claim it because you don't have the virus to test it on it. Right. But it does, you know, it might work for, you know, MERS or SARS and all that shit. It is a good example of if you don't prepare for something and something sneaks up on you, yeah. everything, it's sold out on Amazon. You cannot buy N95 masks. They're okay. saying March now for oh, delivery. Wow. And I went to, um, I did, got some more propane for the bug out retreat that we're in right now. Oh, yeah. And it's not a bug out retreat. Yeah, you know, thanks for spraying me down when I came in, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had to, you know. Yeah. But I went and swapped out some propane tanks, and I went to uh, Lowe's, and wanted to search, and they were out of Tyvek, they were out of goggles, they were out of all mass. The only masks they had were the higher end masks that were like thirty bucks, for the fifty bucks. Yeah. They didn't have the box of cheap N95. Or in one hundred. See, I have those sitting around anyways because of working on trucks right. and stuff like that. So, right, they're there. But so, the, so I did. This was two weeks ago. I was just, I was just thinking, going, you know what? Maybe I should, because my mom, you know, no. everybody's mom's kind of old. And I'm like, gosh, I, maybe I should send her some. So I sent her some gloves, a pair of goggles, <laughs> and some, um, some, some in. I got her in one hundred mask. Okay. Yep. And. uh that's actually what they're recommending right. now because they're saying, right. I mean, even over there, they're telling people to change out their mask every four hours. And right. You need the goggles because air, water vapor. And on Nurse Amy and Dr. Bones or Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy the other night, they went the, they showed people how to completely take off a suit and put mm-hmm. it on without getting contaminated. contaminated. But um, So I said that to my mom. And I, that was two weeks ago, and it's going to be delivered tomorrow. So she has no idea she's getting it. She's going to get this box. and go, send, Probably send you a selfie with this? everything on. <laughs> yeah, she'll probably get it out and play with it. I mean, you know. I, I, I suppose I should call her. Yeah, Let probably. Let her know it's coming. I mean, I've even seen photos over in China where people were taking, like, plastic jugs, cutting holes in them um, and stuff like that. I mean, if you have to, you, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, my brother and sister already have that stuff, so I'm not worried about them. But my mom... I did do that for my mom. So, this brings us up to... Actually, I would like to um, compliment you. Oh, thank you. We've been doing this for a month, and it's been going pretty good. We Our listener base is going nuts. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm surprised. It, I mean, it's all me. Yeah, but, it's, um, it's all you. You do a fantastic job. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thanks for noticing. Yeah. Um, but... We've done it for a month, several podcasts, mm-hmm. and I've put other things out there as well, but this is going pretty good. I yeah. just I actually was feeling so inspired the other day. I half thought about messaging you and be like, hey, do you just want me to go on like an hour-long rant so you can just post that by itself? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, no. It, yeah. So well, you can go on your rant. Do you <laughs> have, I mean, so the other night, gosh, oh, you text me something. And it's like page after page in a text. If you ever got a me- text message that just goes on forever, that's what I got. And you text me like halfway through the day, hey, did you read it yet? And I'm like, um, no, got friends over. And then about two hours later, hey, did you read it yet? And I'm like, no, we're getting ready to eat dinner. And finally, about 10 o'clock, I think I texted you and I said, okay, I just read it. And it was like you were waiting on the edge of your seat. For my response. <laughs> oh, did I did I read it that quick? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, I, I unlike some people, I'm a fantastic communicator, so I leave my red receipts on, <laughs> so people know whenever I've actually viewed their message and respond in a timely manner. I turn my red receipts off. It's like you got something to hide. I get you if you knew how many text messages I get from people I don't know because they think they're my best friend because of oh. running prepper net and everything. Oh, 
So, and it just when when I when, when it, it gives me time to respond to a. That's that's fair yeah. enough. See, okay. I just don't I just don't respond to. Yeah, you I have no friends them. except me. I mean, I just don't read them until I'm ready. <laughs> the only people that text you is your mom and dad, your wife, your son, and me. I mean, mostly you. Maybe it worked. Mostly, no. Oh gosh, yeah, no. Let's not go there. But mostly me. Yeah, mostly, mostly you. Mm-hmm. I do appreciate you coming in, looking at my gun. That was cool. Oh, the one I put together for you. Yeah, the one that we 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 put together. Yeah, what? Oh, that's right. You tapped it with a hammer a couple of times. <laughs> that was that was interesting. Man, you just throw me under the bus. I mean, you were busy doing podcast stuff, and yes, that's actually whenever you were actually busy, and that's what actually brought up my rant. Because okay. at that time, do you remember what you were doing? I don't. You were doing like a group chat thing. Oh, yeah. The, the Zello thing. Yes. Yes. Which is going on right now. Really? Yes. Fantastic. Monday night. Fantastic. So they won't be. Yeah. There's actually two rants there because I didn't even put in the one thing. There was one guy that was talking. Oh, no. You know which one I'm talking about. Okay. The guy that was talking about people rounding up preppers. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know, yeah, and that's that's one thing I, I that's where I'll begin my my rant. Okay, I've been doing this like you have. How long? It's it's been like twenty years for me. Yeah, it's like fifteen something like that for mm-hmm. me. Twenty, I don't know. It's been in stages, some more aggressively than others. I give my my thoughts on conspiracy, or we'll say conspiracy. I say that they're thoroughly researched. That's why, <laughs> like whenever we used to do this, I wouldn't get into the Planet X and all that sort of stuff because. I researched it, and what I found was a bunch of people trying to make profit off of fear-mongering. And I mean, I will say that there are even authors out there right now when it comes to prepping that we know that they make some of their money off of fear-mongering, causing like a sensationalism. And there's a time and a place for things, but don't get up on a stage and pitch some farce to me so you can, you know, sell your book and then run it out of the place, you know. I'm not for that. My book's only five bucks. I'm not making. I thought money. it was free. Well, it, it is be. free on download. It should be. It should be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! But, I bet but, you didn't read my book. No, I mean I've known you for so long. I kind of could imagine what's you, in there. You probably know everything that's in yeah. there. Yes. Um, but this individual chose to start ranting off, which was kind of funny to me because at one point he said that he knew and he had participated in said raids. I do remember that. But then he counteracted that by saying well you know i've, I've just heard of these things and i think they're happening right. but neither here nor there it's crap it's it is. just crap and i'm kind of tired of people going on forums mm-hmm. or going online or posting on youtube and putting all this crap out there there's plenty of sensible preppers out there that actually they're not hurting anything and i'm sure there's nut jobs out there that are also breaking the law. I've, I've known some of them too but you know what they didn't get raided either Right, even the nut guys did. Even the nut cases, yep. because you know what they did? They forgot to pay their taxes, or they fired off a gun in their house, or something stupid that ended up getting them in trouble anyways, because that's who they are. They're eventually going to do something Right, wrong. like the Doomsday Prepper guy. He goes on national TV, shows all his guns, and he's a felon. Hey, let's take a quick break. Are you a prepper or homesteader looking to connect with like-minded people in your area? Looking to start your own preparedness group? Already have a group? Well, look no further than PrepperNet. PrepperNet is dedicated to personal responsibility, individual freedoms, and being self-reliant. PrepperNet has monthly meetings in over 100 cities where you can meet and learn with like-minded people in your area. PrepperNet, where preppers unite. Find us online at PrepperNet.com. Or, no, one of my favorites was one of the guys that was on the first season who I knew, and I told him when the show started, I said, do not do this because you're an idiot. (laughs) And then he did the show, and he literally went on YouTube a couple months later and talked about poisoning half his food supply. Then the State Department of Health came and said, oh, you're mentally unfit. You think... I remember. I remember. That's, I, re- I remember that. That's why whenever they started going around and saying, "Hey guys, we're looking for people," and I'm like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, uh-uh. yeah." I'm like, "Nope, don't take no, him." No. Nope. It kind of makes me look back and kind of wish they had done it, because no, I don't. I really don't. And it's kind of interesting because I am friends now with two people that were were on yeah. it. Um, um, Rick and Jane Austen. 
last season, like next to last show, they did very well. Yeah. And then I know both the judges. Yeah. And and they kind of embarrassed that they were judges, kind of, because it was twisted. But Scott Hunt, which is on Prepper Net's expert panel, yeah. and Southern Prepper One, Dave, which I've communicated with several times this week. He actually joined us for the um Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy oh, webinar nice. online and was communicating How's he through been? chat. Didn't get that far. Yeah. I was I'm going down his way one day this week and I asked him if he wanted to do lunch and we couldn't make it work out. So Gotcha. But um so I was gonna find out. Um okay, let's get to your rant. I mean you I, I can't even like I, I I will say it, but I will just go ahead and ad lib it. Are, are you gonna I, okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read it off. You can read it. That's fine. This is. Um, I feel so on the spot. We are professionals. Well, wow. professionals get paid. We are amateurs. Very good ones. Yeah, I won't even go that oh, far. Oh, did you see Rush had cancer? I did. That's sad. I, it really is. I mean, love him or hate him, he has been a rock for the conservative yeah. party. He has. Now, if it were like Bill O'Reilly, I'd be like, mm-hmm. yeah, Bill's been pretty good too. Bill, Bill's good, but Bill just doesn't know when to shut up. Oh, yeah. My, I mean, whenever my son was like five, Bill O'Reilly was on television, and he literally said, "That man's really rude. He doesn't let his guests talk." <laughs> and I mean, out of the eyes of a of a babe, like literally, that's the right. truest form of right. yeah, right. Bill O'Reilly. Okay, bring up your dis- dissertation. <sighs> Gosh, so we were listening, or I'm, I'm building You're listening your AR. to a Zello with... I'm listening to that. And, and I don't know these people. These are don't. random people on our PrepperNet Zello channel. Exactly. And they're talking about groups. Groups. They're talking about prepping. And I and, love groups. Yeah, and I, you know what? I love groups, too. Um, here's my thing. Go ahead. It's basic. Everything that they were saying, it, there's there's a lot of commonality, but everything is so basic and just so simple. And, and I feel like it's the same conversations that I was hearing. I know some people are, are new to prepping. They may be doing it a year, two years. But it's the same conversations I've heard for 20 years, 15 years, 10 years. And it's it's lame. And, and not in a way that's boring. I mean, it's lame like as in like crippled. It's like, what, what are you effectively doing to actually move with this stuff? I get that you're talking about groups. I get that there is some sort of a point to starting off with, you know, one person, two people, and building out there. But there's no passion behind it. Mm -hmm. There's no real fiber. Like, the ideas that people are putting out aren't that dynamic. Like, whenever we talk about some of this stuff. You can read it word for word. uh, You know. It's that good. It's pretty good. Okay, so when I say this, I don't want to come across offensively, but what I'm seeing is problematic. Preppers are at a standstill. The ideas are not dynamic enough to implement effective change beyond a personal level or reach a true level of preparedness. When I say this, I know there are people that will say, who are you to judge? Or what do you know? Well, I've been preparing for nearly 20 years. I've participated in the movement in a variety of capacities And I'll fairly assess that the conversations have not changed in those nearly two decades. And that's a problem. I'll very, very bluntly tell you that at this moment, preppers lose. They don't survive what's coming. No, not the political onslaught, not the religious persecution, and not even the geological events, let alone EMPs or wars or pandemics. Actually, I wrote that before the pandemic started. We fail because we're hidden. Preppers are a blip on the radar of mainstream society, strongly comprised of an older demographic and, frankly, isolationist and are deemed conspiracy theorists by a self-obsessed society bent on destruction. Doing pretty good so far? Yep. Isolationism has a time and a place, but let's get something straight. You don't survive alone as a prepper. You can't even survive as a larger group of preppers in a collapse. Perhaps you think there's some story out there for you where you survive in a bunker stacked with food, weapons, silver, and your family. Any fantasies you have about your bug out bag, your AR-15s, your Red Dawn, and a small group you've created are fodder in reality's path. The technology that exists today can and very likely will be used in the future to hunt down dissidents and unwanted members of society for the greater good. What do you think so far? Keep going. Keep going. (laughs) As much as you may hate to hear this, you know as well as I that this is the reality. 
as a reality we have in our powers to change. We talk groups, we know they're essential, but the conversations need to stop for a moment. It's time to be practical and not start the race before the buzzer has even sounded. Preppers have to expand from a strong core and move outwards into society. Where are you with your prepping? Is there a year's worth of food in your pantry, a garden, firearms, ammo, and do you actually have the skills? Moreover, are you comfortable with your prepping or are you complacent? And you have to be very honest with yourself right there. If you're complacent, it's time to pick up and get active. If you're comfortable, then by all means, you're prepared to start a group. When we talk groups, it's not complicated. And it does start with two people and it grows from there. Here's the challenge though. And here's why so many preppers are hitting a wall. Once you have a group, what else is there? Is it just buying stuff? I'm literally asking you to think about this. If you're going to tell me it's time to wait for the proverbial excrement to hit the fan, then you're an idiot. And yes, I, I really do think you that. You did write that. I do think that. Yep. Okay. Literally in every use of the word, stop saying you're a prepper and admit to yourself you are in fact a coward who is preparing to hide. Preppers need to use better apologetics and gusto for the lifestyle than what has ever been displayed publicly. This is my challenge to those of you that want to be preppers or think you're preppers. Show some backbone and stop following or stop looking for fellow preppers. If you have a strong core and good apologetics, then it's time to make preppers. There's a huge difference between looking for people of that mindset and making them. This movement is about so much more than your Second Amendment or some theoretical apocalypse. You only survive with numbers in your favor. The more preppers in your neighborhood, town, county, and state, and so on, the better your chances. The prepper movement does not continue to grow, or does not continue unless it grows. Dare I say, unless it moves forward politically. And perhaps that's where we need to go. And I'm going to stop there, because after that, I did get political. You did very. Yeah. And I told you you should take that out, but that's... But, okay. I agree... With, on the for on the, the most idiot part. part, yeah, for yeah. the idiot part, preppers are complacent. Like I, I haven't seen them this complacent in in years. But that's a, but that's what I'm saying is. But is, not only that, hang on. Not no. only are they complacent, even when 2012, when the Shemitah, and everyone was buying is everything. That Mayan? Hmm. Yeah, the mine can- oh, counter yeah. and all that. Yeah. People were buying food. The problem is, all they were doing was buying. They weren't getting the skills or training. I'll even take it beyond that. It's not just about the skills and the training. Once you have all this crap, what are you doing? I And, I, and I'll be honest, and this is something I didn't write. And I was having a thought the other day. I was down in my equivalent bunker. And I was looking at all my stuff. And I, I've been getting very well organized and keeping everything clean and also working on my gym. And I was sad. I No, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I have some top-notch, excellent stuff, and I'm very well prepared. Mm-hmm. I know there's going to be a couple of things that you're going to rant about that I'm not prepared, but I honestly felt sad because I'm thinking, what in the blank is wrong with the world we live in today that I have to do this? Right. Why do I have to do this? And why am I doing it in everyone in the world I'm talking to is barely doing it, with the exception of you and a few others that I know that are actually legitimately doing this. Why? And I, yes. And my goal, and you know this, I'm a champion to make other preppers. Mm -hmm. I've made my neighborhood, at least five neighbors, somewhat preppers. Because it takes community. Not not only a, a survival or mag group, that's when all heck breaks loose. And your your main goal is to get with your other fellow MAG members so your community can start operating together. But a lot of times you might not get to that place. No. A lot of times it's just a hurricane or it's a pandemic. Do you bug out for a pandemic? You, if you, if you get 10, I mean, it depends on how soon you go. Yeah. But if you're in a city, realistically, right, right. how far are you going to get? And so you've got to make community no matter where you are. And you've got to motivate other people. In my book, I wrote um, that, the, and I am going a little religious, I guess. It says, 
If you can't take care of your immediate family, you're worse than the unbeliever. It's the only time in the Bible it talks about yeah. being worse than the unbeliever. Yeah. And it's because we have to not only, it's, a, it's, a, it's more than just food. It's more than just guns because a lot of people focus on guns. And it's more just on living off the earth. Um, there are people that they, the essential oils, they can can, they have a garden, everything, but they have no guns. Yeah. They have no communication. And they, they, they have no, all these other things, but they're great in this one field. And let me ask you, because I, I know the answer to this, because I, I won't even lie. I'm not even shy about it. I grew up in a fantastic neighborhood outside of Chicago. <laughs> is there? Yeah, there, there really <laughs> no, is. Okay. But how would you say one of the best ways to, to do that within your local vicinity, so your local neighbors, your community? Like, what's one of the best possible ways to get that started? A community garden? I, will, I actually will take it know. even more basic than that. Okay. Have a block party. Oh, yeah. We, absolutely. We used to do that growing up all the time. We were actually <clears throat> well known for it. We got like national you know, party attention. Party at Kyle House. Yeah, party at Kyle House. No, but you know, I can remember growing up and us doing this. And, you know, my best friend growing up, his dad mm -hmm. would make huge things of salsa, like massive, like three, four gallons worth of salsa. You know, you'd have 200 to 500 people there. It, it was crazy. Barn fire, stuff like right. that. But you got to talk to your neighbors. And then you know we what you do? We don't do things like that. But we why? should. I know. We should. And that's the problem is this country is so polarized and everyone is so divided. And there are so many, you know, one topic voters that they'll right. divide as soon as they hear something they don't, you know, they don't like. Have a block party. Get mm -hmm. to know your neighbors. Because you know what? You might still not be able to stand them. Mm -hmm. But Jane across the street might be a really good gardener. And she might also do all her own, you know, candy and stuff like that. So when the crap hits the fan... You have someone on your side that says, hey, you know what? I can do X, Y, and Z. Right. I know that you're, you know, kind of looking out for everyone in the neighborhood. You know, let's let's get together and make sure, you know. And I've done that. Actually, my two neighbors, they're fascinated with my bug out. Yeah. They're like, what is that? It's big. Yeah. What's the nuclear signs on the side? <laughs> <laughs> and I felt that I needed to talk to them because I'm getting ready to put up some major antennas. It's going to look like NORAD here. <laughs> Good thing you don't have an HOA. I, I don't. Um, and I, and, and so they both came over on Saturday afternoon and we were just sitting in here talking and I told them what I was going to do and the wires and the antennas and everything. And they're like, yeah, why, why are you doing this? And, and they are so fascinated with what I've got going on. And I leave, this is not my retreat. Yeah. We're, but I leave enough that if someone comes into this in this building and they look up above your head and what do you see? And I turn them so people could see them on purpose. Yeah. It says meals ready to eat individuals. And there's what, 10 cases up there? Well, there's nine, oh, yeah, but there's yeah. another one back there. Yeah. Unopened. And everyone's eyes go, what are they MREs? I'm like, yeah, MRE. Yeah. yeah, that's how an acronym works. <laughs> yeah, that's how acronym. And they're like, what do you got that for? And we start, and they they're amazed by what I'm doing. And then they start talking about, well, you know, my wife and I. So he, um, one neighbor just bought a gun. Mm -hmm. The other neighbor, I told you, both of them bought a generator. And so they're really, I'm making a community here of people that's starting to think about it. Yeah. And that's just that's kind of like. I mean, these guys, you know, I'm leaving so they can have all this stuff. And I've even told them that. I'm like, we'll just come over here and we'll make. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to be here. Yeah, help yourself to whatever I'm going to Tampa. Life, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but what makes me mad, people do gardening and they focus on that. And that's what their whole focus is. Or medical or guns. Guns is probably the easiest one. People, oh, I got guns and I got ammo. Yeah, but I don't... You know that I have a good amount. And I know that you have a good amount of things. But there are those preppers. That I've, I mean, I've come across them stocking sites because they want to try and make friends with who has stuff right. so that they can target them. And we like, all, oh, yeah. You need all the skills if you can. And so one of the rants I have, it's going to... It's gonna, are you? Fin we're not finished, but we're gonna we're gonna just add to yours. Yeah, yeah. One of the rants I have is this, and I'm gonna get a lot of hate 
on this. And I, I, I just, I know I am. I put one post on our Facebook page and within two days, 156 comments were on it because so the radio was invented in the late 1800s. Mm-hmm. When you transmit on a radio, you're using the exact dang technology from 120 years ago. It's RF waves, either VHF, UHF, or HF. And it goes through the space, and it goes to an antenna, and there's all kinds of limitations. And then you try to get preppers to learn ham, and they, they get a Baofeng radio, and they go, look, I got this. And I tell them, well, that's useless. You know, it's a good walkie-talkie. Mm-hmm. And, and you try to get them into, like, the real communications, hidden repeaters, or HF, and they're lost because of all the different radios you got a radio you got a power supply you got an antenna tuner you got particular antennas for the radio then if you got software all this crap that goes along to making communications right now voice is not happening very well because the sunspots you mean yeah the the earth the sun has actually is less active which makes ham communication like hf more difficult yep and so you got all this stuff. You're supposed to go digital. You do use FF, JG, and all this kind of stuff. And normal people go, I, I don't have time for that. And I understand that. But here's my point. Facebook we've had for 16 dang years. And they can't get a radio that has all that crap in there with just a couple of buttons. And the reason why, it's their own fault. They love an- tuning the antenna. They love getting their laptop out and doing digital. Mm-hmm. They love all the actual, the actual old school way of doing radio, and that's why it's a dying hobby. It is a dying hobby. Yeah. When you go to a ham fest, and I am not racist at all, yeah. but all that are there are sixty-five to eighty-five year old white men on oxygen tanks and half of them are in wheelchairs. And it's dying because they won't innovate it to bring it to point and click or touch. Mm-hmm. No, I totally agree. And so that makes it difficult for preppers or anyone to get into this ham radio. I'll be honest with you. I'll even take it a step further because how you feel about ham radios is mm-hmm. how I feel about the food, how oh, yeah. I feel about the storage, how I feel about pandemic equipment. Here's the thing. There's a difference between someone who's a prepper and someone who just likes to buy stuff. Right. <laughs> because that's what I think the majority of them are. They like to buy crap and never learn how to use it. So that whenever something actually happens, well, they have a library of prepping books. They have, you know, a year's worth of food. They have a bunch of seeds, but they don't have any idea how to use half of it. Right. Well, but I can eat. But do you know how long you need to soak those beans? Do you, right. you know how to do simple bushcraft? Do you know how to make a fire in a way that doesn't, you know, shed light all throughout your neighborhood? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and I agree. So there's skills that we have to learn. But buying stuff, so you, my group, which I've talked about a lot, is is a group of white-collar workers that I made preppers. Wrong way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Get people that have a passion for it. Because... It's so frustrating. Or make them. I, I, you know, I have a good buddy that literally, when he and I met, he was actually an employee of mine. He's like ten years younger. His his biggest passion, honestly, was smoking weed. Now he's your biggest actual, passion is smoking weed. No, it is not. I've never touched it. But he's a legit prepper now. He's working on his food. He's mm-hmm. working on his skills. Firearms training. He's he reads up on stuff. Like he keeps on stuff the way I do. But there's ten categories, and you need all ten. You need to learn. Last year, I focused on medical, and I think I talked about this. I don't know if you know this. I went to Recondo and did a trauma. I went to Las Vegas to North American Rescue and did a trauma where they use flash grenades. It scared the crap out of me. Oh, that sounds exciting. And you're going into a room with smoke and the noise and you having to evaluate patients. And they were real makeup people. I mean, the guy was shot in the butt 
and was he his had butt flap hanging his off? bus his butt was bleeding. Oh my goodness! Because they had real, I mean, real my people. My question is, why did you go to the guy with the shop butt? No, the, I well, we we all switched around. Okay, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> One girl was shot in the ankle, and so last, and I I've been I've done um, I also did skinny medic in in Greenville, South Carolina. I did stop the bleed. So I did a ton of things medical last year. Yeah. That was one of the, my weaknesses. I'm certified now in like first aid, wilderness first aid. I got stopped the bleed. I mean, all these things. So last year I focused on medical. Yeah. That doesn't mean I can stop, but I know enough now that I maybe do a refresher every year. Yeah. And this year I, so I wrote some of the things down that I was weak and it's not really grown the food, except I'm not, I'm not a green thumb like you, mm-hmm. but I have all my life had a garden. Yeah. That doesn't make me an expert. But what just today, this morning at five o'clock, I woke up and I put I wanted I need to learn how to save meat. Oh yeah. And so today I watched several people smoke meat over on a fire. And I and I'm trying to learn. The only thing is, a couple of the videos, it's it's modern. You got to have like a bucket of salt. And so I'm like, okay, that's not practical. No, that's one of the things that's on my agenda this year is building a smoker. But then a lot of guys, I actually remember having some conversation over Thanksgiving, um, like salt packing. Well, you, you got to have the salt though. You, you got to be able to to be able to catch fish i remember this on alone the guy caught all this fish and had it stored i think he put it in the ground or something but you've got to be able to store the meat yeah. how do you do that without a ton of salt do you, i mean do you make it jerky and so that's kind of some you of the things you're essentially dehydrating it out and that extracts the bacteria right. out and once it's dry you don't have to worry about you know, infectious diseases and stuff like that. So that's one of the things I'm weak on, and I need to. I, I that's one of the things I'm going to learn. The interesting thing is, I looked up for classes in North South Carolina, Virginia. I can't find any. See, that's what's funny is because we're literally looking for lost knowledge. Right. I know that sounds right. crazy, but it is. You're right. We're we're looking for like like not too many people, and this is one of the things that's on my my proper agenda is building an ice house. You know, I mean, people don't have any idea that ice houses even exist and that the Egyptians were the first ones to actually mm-hmm. have basically your, your ice cube. And they would keep ice all summer long. In the middle of the desert. Right. It's right. possible. Yes. But, I mean, that's one of those things that it has hundreds of uses, not just for your, you know, sweet tea. That reminds me of a book that I read about six years ago. It was called Off, Off Grid. It's probably about the time I met you. I'm not sure, but it's called Off Off Grid, and they talked about spring sellers. They talked about ice sell, you know how to how to make them, mm-hmm. why they were made. And I had a spring seller growing up, a pipe coming out of the side of the mountain, mm-hmm. fed water, went through a little building. We, I mean, we put our milk and cheese and stuff in there. Yeah, and I'm from the mountains of North Carolina. That would explain a lot, but um. But also things, the old ways, I didn't know this, but most old old homes mm-hmm. are built about four feet off the ground. The insect line. Well, yeah. And so then they had their first floor and every door had a window above it that would open. And then the second floor, every all the bedrooms were on the second floor that had a balcony. And once you get past, like, whatever the first floor is, Mm -hmm. that's the insect line. Yep. And they would open their doors at night and sleep on outside and not be eaten by bugs. No one knows that. No. No, I mean, when I read that, I was like, what? And the windows, excuse me, hang on, the windows above the door, it created a draft through the house that cooled the house down. Because the the way the windows were, oh and my And you gosh. know what you didn't have to worry about back then with older homes? What? Black mold. Oh, because there was always airflow. There was always airflow. Nowadays, the way they make them, everything's sealed up. Mm-hmm. And I mean, do you remember Todd? Chiropractor? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he had to deal with that. He moved from Texas, and mm-hmm. the first thing he found out was, and that's what the builder right. told him, is like, literally, your house is airtight. Nothing escapes, hence the black mold. But that... that Yes, that bug line 
You just don't think about it. And when I started thinking, there's no lights above that line. And there's and the, the, they only go like, I don't know what that is. It might be like 25 feet or whatever. That's why houses are built yeah. the way they were built back then. But they figured it out. And we don't even know any of that stuff. That's yeah. old knowledge. But back... This is part of the rant. I know that was okay. kind of a rant within itself, but that's part of it. It's we just, love the rant. Yeah. This is definitely a rant. Or is it called bitching and complaining? I think it's that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> bitching and moaning. Wait, can we say that? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> so what's... Um, oh, another thing. So you are weak I mean, in ham radio. I, yeah, I'll admit that. And, the, and it, I would say it's not your fault. No. Because the learning curve, the equipment, everything is so complex, and the hammer hammers the the ham operators they keep it that way. Yeah. There's been very little innovation on. Again, if I had five hundred thousand dollars, I could create a radio that had digital, that had CW, that had. Um, so one of the things I want is a is a CW on my phone, and I text a message. It goes through the radio, and it goes to my mom, and she reads it on her phone. Yeah. That can be done because I've done it with a device called a QRP, which is a low wattage ham radio. I've done that. I've seen it work. That should be like I remember easy. a number of years ago, I seen something, and I forget who made it. But there was some sort of device that would attach to a particular brand of cell phone, and it was supposed to digitize ham radio. Right. But it was a concept. Right. It never actually got invented. But that would be, you know, it was one of the first things I seen. I was like, dude, that would be so awesome if it was brought into the modern age. It was like something that was almost like a cell phone case or something like that. It would be great. So if I had a radio that was push easy, I was talking to a ham radio guy today. Um, he's with Amron. And he started saying, well, the antenna tune, I'm like, stop. That that term never needs to be no- used. And I, know, mm-hmm. I don't mean to geek out here. It never needs to be used. If it's built in, you really don't have to talk about it anymore. Just put two different antenna links on there or whatever, and yeah. boom. He goes, well, then, well, how about the tuning? I'm like, no, 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 stop. No, you don't need to tune. Press A. If I press A... On my radio, and you press A on your radio, we're at the same frequency. Yeah. If that didn't work, we we, we press B. He goes, oh, so you want like a kid's version to work? I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of like whenever I work on trucks, trying to explain a carbureted system to someone versus using like EFI or a TBI or something like that. I hate carburetors. <laughs> Like, you've seen the expression on my Sorry, face. I, I hate am. carburetors. I'm laughing because <laughs> like, you said that with they such have, passion. They have some merit, but they're also a huge pain in them. Mm. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I would, hands down, rather use a variety of other fuel you know, injection systems, but right. not that. So but that, that's, that's what I'm saying is the carburetor is basically like the ham radio. Right. So And you're weak on ha- on – that doesn't mean you don't own ha- – the ham radio communications, no. you just, it's just a learning curve. Yeah. So, um, the fish thing, I wrote a few things down. Oh, make preppers and build, and you got to build community, but it's the, it's the mindset of survival. I think that's what it comes down to. It, I want to survive. And so I'm doing all this stuff for me and my family and my community, because we're going to get through things and it's that will to survive. People aren't tested. They're not thinking about survival because you know what? They get in their little Lexus or Honda Accord and drive to work. Their heated seats. And the heated seats, and you know what? They park in the garage. They don't even have to scrape their windows and you know the windshield anymore. Yeah. And and they're fat and happy. Yep. That pretty much sums it up right there. People are fat and happy. Mm-hmm. The biggest problem I have is just the complacency. I'm tired of us yep. having in the prepping community the same conversations but you know, that we've been having this entire time. You're right. And it really comes down to the fact that everyone's hit a wall. Well, we need they're to waiting move for to something a, and they don't know what they're doing. We need to move to a readout. Yeah. Where where they have that kind of mindset. I, I mean, that's kind of where I was going with like the political thing. Is mm-hmm. It's kind of like leave and cleave, cut it, separate everybody, right. and... There are those of us that passionately want to do this. And if you're going to be a pretender. Well, I am looking at moving 
to where my bug out retreat is located. And same. That's that's Miami, Florida. Yeah, mine's not far off. Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Sweet. We yeah. could we could get our groups to talk to each other if yeah. we knew how to do ham. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just it's really disheartening because this is the biggest thing. It's like you know if you haven't had that moment where you sit back and you look at all your stuff, mm-hmm. and I'm sure you you've had this. You have a family and you've probably sat there and thought, what kind of crap is this that I have to actually prepare for these things? That I even have to entertain right. a thought. And most people will come across you and they'll say, oh, I could never. Well, if that happened, I'd just die. And I'm, I'm so perturbed by that thought because I especially hear a lot of women say that where I've even heard women say to their husbands, well, I'd just shoot myself. Or I'd, you know, I'll put a, stay pillow, in, yeah, put a yeah. pillow over the kid or something. I'm like, wow, that's so morbid. You kind of lose respect for people when they you, say you that. You do. You do entirely. And you think, well, if this is the fiber of the being that you are right. just thinking about something happening, then who are you today? Right. Pretty much fake as you can be. You know what? I think, I'll be honest with you, I think they're lying. And the reason I say that, I think they're just so satisfied and happy, fat and happy. But I think they're lying because all my friends, if they were to see a car that just had an accident on the side of the road, every one of my friends would stop their car, get out, and go check on the person and won't would want to help that person as yeah. much as they want as they could. They would do that. That's because it's real. There's someone's life on the line and they will risk their life or to at least harm to help someone else. But I'm going to, I'm going to keep, I want to say something and I know I'm interrupting you. That's fine. But here's my thing. And I, and I am going to go biblical on you. So the Bible literally says that in those days, Things will be so severe that people will literally drop over dead from fear. And that is possible. You can witness something that's so horrific that your adrenals dump all the adrenaline into your body and literally it kills you. And that's, I don't know what exactly that looks like. I don't think any of us a know what that looks like. A fainting goat would be a good example of that. That would be kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Except they do get up. <laughs> yeah, they do. But I think that there are literally so many people out there that have. Mm-hmm. Such a weak constitution that no matter what it is, I, I lean to that. There will be people that will literally just drop over dead. They right. will have heart attacks or strokes or God knows what it causes, but they will literally just drop over. The coolest thing, and I get it's probably wrong for me to think this way, but when the crap hits the fan and you look over at your friends or you think about your friends and you go, hmm. They wish they were more like me now, don't they? <laughs> or they had the mindset that I had because now they're screwed. Yeah. And it, and I wouldn't say it I wouldn't say you're using that just to, for pride, but it's confirmation that what you were doing yeah, was the right thing and people other people should have been doing it as well. And and you know what? I'm going to say this and it's not conspiracy. I'm not going to I'm not going to say everything because it's another podcast I listen to. There's another individual that I've followed for a number of years. Martha I, Stewart. Martha Stewart. She's an amazing, amazing woman. <laughs> um, no, he, he, I've listened to this guy for years, and fact by fact, things that he said or predicted were going to come true, he has been dead on. The man can literally say, there's going to be a 7.7 earthquake in three weeks at this location, and... It happens. Is it the guy we were talking about? I think I know it who is. you're talking about. It yeah. is. I've watched he's, him. He's saying right now, he's saying May of this year, there's going to be a major event that he will release in detail as it comes. But he said it will literally shock the entire world, if not wipe out parts of it. Wow. I, and, know, and the guy, I, I know the guy who you're talking about. And I think you turned me on to him several years ago, and I've watched many of his videos, and the guy is not nuts. I mean, he is... He's very well educated. Yes. Very. He, um, he knows what he's talking about. And he has a he has a prepper mindset or survivalist mindset. And he's not a sensationalist. He's not like some authors right. or some preppers. He He's very responsible with how he releases information. He doesn't sit there and he doesn't say like, hey, this is going to happen and you guys need to do this and this. He says, no, you're going to watch for this and it's going to happen, but you're going to be mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. But right now he's saying May of this year, you something know, major is going to happen. We need to, do, we need to do a religious podcast. We need to go through my timeline of the end times. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think the timeline. I think you know. And what leads up to that? I don't know. I mean, I think that would be. We we have differing views there. We do, and you're we wrong, do. but that's fine. No, I mean, I, I mean, I love when people are it wrong. Depends and they, on how you view the semantic range of things, and <laughs> you know, it's okay. I still don't believe that a giant asteroid is going to hit and poison a third of the waters, but. Oh, you still think it's going to come from Russia? From no, I don't think it's Chernobyl. Oh, you don't? Okay, no. I, I, I don't. I think e- it's I totally either. different. I think it's actually referring to the living waters. Mm. Because if you read early on, we're jumping right into it. I, I know. I'm gonna. <laughs> we should. We should just save that for. For that, we could talk for. That's a two hour podcast, which is fun. I love. You know, I will say though, I tried okay. talking to someone from the church uh-huh. who is who's very much up there, and his father is very noted. You probably know who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Maybe. A, yeah, uh, N and D. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And. He he looked at me like I was insane, and I was you know trying to make a case for it, and then he just kind of turns back to him. He was like, "Okay, well, that was nice," but his specialty is more apologetics. I realize, right? Yes, I am. Um, mm-hmm. Well, you know, I differ from a lot of people at our church. Yeah, same. And, and the funny thing is, the most studied, most knowledgeable, most respected person in our church that just retired, we're on the same page. <laughs> yeah. So. But anyway, the one thing I did forget in Uh-oh. my rant. Oh, go ahead. The apologetics for prepping. Okay, that means being able to defend what the heck you're doing mm-hmm. and defend it intelligently. Don't don't go in about conspiracy theory. Make it practical. Right. And well, Planet X. You know, NASA's yeah. hiding that, and yeah. it's going to hit us, if and that's you, why I'm prepping. Yeah, if you go into a government conspiracy or Planet X or aliens or anything, no one's going to listen to you. Make it practical and say, hey, you know, based on what's going on in the country today, how society looks, pandemics or whatever, it's probably the best case you can make right now. Even if it doesn't hit going into the summer, throw a block party and throw it out there and just say, hey, guys, you know, I've been thinking about doing this in a community garden just in case, you know, right now I actually pitched it once and said, you know, hey, for those people that are unemployed in the neighborhood, have nothing to do or they're elderly, gives them something to do and people who might be hard on times, they can go down there and they can grab some of the stuff that they need. Right. So in China, okay, imagine your city right where you live right now. And 15 people were was just diagnosed with the coronavirus. Yeah. Your grocery stores will have a run on it. They would shut it down, your community down. This really could happen. Yeah. It's going on right now in China. They've, the grocery stores are emptying out and the th- and people have to go back out to get food yeah, or help. And they don't have it. I mean, right. Grant, they do have ramen, I'm sure. And yeah. that lasts a long time. <laughs> but being serious, you know, a pandemic bothers me because you're isolated. Right. Depending on how it, it plays out. The other thing is with a disease like this, if there's 11 people in the U.S. that have it, that means there's at least another... 40 or 50 who have it. And until they get caught, there's another 250 and so on and so on and so on until they actually even start to feel the symptoms. So it's, it's here. It's here, but we don't know to what capacity yet. You know, the States, let me think about the States, California. Okay. Let's just isolate them and push them off the ocean. No, <laughs> no, there's New lots York, of people in California. Chicago. Wait, uh, no, I'm kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. It could, it could, I don't think it's going to get bad, but if you would have listened the other night with Doctor Hatfield on the other the podcast that I played, um, he's terrified. Yeah, he he says there's some scenarios that possibly 120 million people die from this. Yeah, I believe it. Some of the estimates that I've read, and what's bothering me is because this continues to grow, and the initial estimates where they were saying 10,000 people by next week, this past week. People were saying, oh, it's conspiracy, it's crap, it's not going to happen. Well, then the numbers hit 12,000 on Friday. And they go, oh, well, maybe it's possible. But the next projection that I'm watching for, they predict it. And I believe it was Bianca Research that predicted this. I can remember the source properly. Said that by the end of next month, there would be 100 million people globally infected. Wow. That doesn't mean death, right. but that means infection. Because some people are re- fully recovered. But here's the thing. Oh, he said this. He said that we don't know that if someone recovers from the virus, if they can spread it 
even after they're fully yeah, they're recovered. they're still a carrier. And, and that's where I think that that comes into. If it is truly a bioweapon. Right. And it does have something like the HIV strand in there. But it amazes me he didn't know that. Yeah. And he's a, one of the leading experts. Yeah. And if you talk to most people that are in the medical field right now, like mm-hmm. I, I ask people this all the time. And what you got coronavirus? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I mean, I'd like to. Everything's been really slow. But if they're if they're nervous about going out, or mm-hmm. if they're in the medical field, hey, are you nervous about it? Mm-hmm. And right now, the consensus is for people here, they're not worried about it. Right. Another thing he said. It's a great pot. It's only thirty minutes long. You need to listen to it. Um, Steve from Alerts USA interviewed him. He said our healthcare system in America right now is. Minus fifty thousand workers. I'm not sure that's the right way to do it. Say it. Yeah, there's a deficit. Of deficit 50, of yeah. fifty thousand healthcare workers right now. Yeah. In our in the United States, and he said America is nowhere near ready. We we're not prepared, and I'm going to say this really bluntly: the Chinese they have grown up in a communist nation where they know they're handling it better than we will. Yes, and the main because they obey we, their government. They do, and it's out of fear. Right. People here don't fear the government. If there's ever any sort of martial law, quarantine, mm-hmm. stuff like that, people will agitate the system. And right. they will make it worse on everybody else. The Second Amendment people going, wait a minute. You're not going to make me lock up in my house. I mean, yeah. and and it could, yeah. And and, I, and I'll even take it further. Until we know more what this disease looks like, right. and if it does come down to that sort of scenario, if you do choose to help people out or if you do choose to group up with people, quarantine yourselves. Right. Because you don't know who's bringing in what. and. It, if you have your supplies as you should, keep yourself separated for 14 days. Well, yeah, they are saying the 14 days is about the time period. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. It is. We, I never, pandemic, I prepared for it just because I read a book. I forgot what book I read. The Bible? Well, 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 no. <laughs> well, no some, there was that. Someone wrote a book, and I don't know... If it was Franklin Horton or whoever, it Horton may, hears a who? What? Yeah. yeah, but I, I so I did get you know the things for a pandemic. I got fish antibiotics. I got suits. I, I see some suits up on, on the shelf over there right now, it, and I did that years ago. But I never thought a pandemic would ever really happen. No, that's, I'd agree with that. It's probably one of the few things. That's why I think it I bothers really thought me it, because an EMP would happen first because yeah. of North Korea or something. Yeah. And now I'm going, crud, this is serious. Yeah. I mean, I, I prepared for it. I have things I've read, mm-hmm. natural medicines and other things I've prepared. But the idea of it actually happening, thinking about the idea of containment and quarantine, it's it's not something that's pleasant to think about. I tell you what not to do. Lick people. <laughs> I don't know. I've been joking about if I got it, I'd just start licking strangers, but... You're an idiot. <laughs> okay, that, <laughs> that totally took me off guard. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> no. Try not to. So, my... We were... I was talking about it with my daughter and another guy, and he goes, Hey, you ever seen the movie Contagion? Hmm. And I'm like, no. And Cassie goes, let's watch that. So with my 16-year-old daughter, Mm -hmm. we watch Contagion. Nice. And immediately after, we're like washing our hands. And she, I mean, it was, I said, well, how did school go? She goes, well, I watched, I noticed everyone that coughed. She goes, I noticed when people touch their face, because in the movie they tell you how many times you touch your face in a day and all this stuff. She yeah. goes, I noticed all that. And I said, I did too. <laughs> you, you know what's awful? And this this is not a racial kind. I'm not, a, not racist by any means. But I've noticed like every Asian person that comes in close proximity. And I swear there's usually not that many. But like I'll, I'll be out somewhere and taking a short break and sit down. And then like someone Asian will come up and sit next to me. And I actually sat down next to her, like, well, I didn't sit down. I, mm. I was by myself, and then a couple of guys came and sat next to me. And it just happened to be the time I needed to leave. Mm-hmm. When I got up, they started laughing because I think that they thought I, they were going to give it to me or something. But okay. that wasn't it. Okay. That wasn't it. But it's just it's funny how you notice things like that. You, especially when you watch a movie and then this is going on. I watch every time someone touches their face or they, you know, I saw a kid put their finger in their nose and I'm like, Oh, I'm not sure I really 
no, well, I probably wouldn't notice that before, but a lot of the stuff I didn't notice before. And now when I wash my hands in the bathroom, I'm care. I mean, it's just. You wash your hands in the bathroom. I don't use the blower. Oh, I, I just, you just don't wash my I hands. I use go and wash my hands with soap and water and, and walk out or. Use with, your with, elbow with, like a chicken wing. Yeah. And walk yeah. out without touching anything. I just usually don't wash my hands. Don't you pee all over them when you go to the bathroom? No. No. <laughs> Hands-free operation. <laughs> I learned so much about you. It's that I don't want to know. And I, I don't poop. That's a sin. <laughs> Catholic. You know that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but I wash my hands. I always have hand cleaner with me. Or what do you call this See, stuff? But that won't kill the coronavirus. This won't. No, that does not kill it. Alcohol, 100% alcohol won't kill no. it? Crap. No, they, they even said something about that. No. Uh, you have to use like germicidal bleach. I'm going to die then. Not just regular bleach, germicidal bleach. Okay. I got yeah. hand sanitizer everywhere. I don't use it a lot because you're not supposed to use it a lot, but it is for an emergency or something. You drink it too, can't you? No. Oh, oh okay. No. It That's clean. just regular alcohol. Oh. <laughs> That's just Jack Daniels right there. Okay. So, um, oh, one other small rant. Okay. I'm ranting for a while. I know. This is another, this is a small rant. This is going to get people riled up too. I teach, before I get into this, I teach classes on privacy and security. I have a webinar that I've done, privacy and security. Mm -hmm. I help people disappear off the internet. I help people create aliases. I, I am in this game. I used to be the webmaster at Bank of America and Nations Bank. Yeah, I really wish when you helped me disappear, I'd have picked a better name than Kyle. There's a lot of memes out there for Kyle's. Lucy? <laughs> oh, no, <fucking> cute. <laughs> so, I'm in this game. People all the time, especially with PrepperNet, well, oh, and you, but you do it for different reasons. Oh, I don't do pre Facebook because of the privacy and security issues. And I'm like, oh, no, tell me really why you don't do it. Because your your biggest privacy, I mean, get rid of your phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you kidding me? You're worried about Facebook, one website, one app. Are you kidding? You have Google. I, every, I guarantee you, you have a Gmail account. Yeah. That is more evasive than Facebook ever has been. Okay, hang on. I'm not pointing my finger at you, but you do it for different reasons. You just don't like people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, that's, that's actually the entirety of it. That's that's different. But people go, well, I, I, I hate Facebook. And so here's the thing. If you ever listen to my private security, or if you ever listen to Sam Copler from oh, um, Forward Observer, I was looking because I have a sticker his somewhere on here, around here. You've got to get intel of your neighbors. I know my last neighborhood, I had 123 homes. And I told, I've told this many times, I became the, the HOA president. Fear me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyone who's president of the HOA, woo, look at every, every time I sent an email, I said, friend me on Facebook. And then I got a six by six map. Of my neighbors, if they hear this, they're gonna think I'm a freak, which which I am. Yeah. And I have a dog named Lucky. Went to the shooting range. Oh, that um, just posted an Obama ad. And I had a profile for all these people in my entire neighborhood. I knew more about them than they knew about them. I now this is voter registration, this is, all that fun stuff. Oh yeah, and this is a G rated podcast but several times i knew when the guy was in the doghouse and they were fighting and several times i actually knew that the husband and wife had sex the night before oh. by things that they would say in their comments or at least it, you it would make think you it's like a full-time job right there it was it was fun it kinda, took a lot. Kinda, it took a lot crazy. of time, but I knew all my neighbors. I knew when they were going on vacation. I knew where their kids went to school. That's intel that's needed 
in a grid down. Well, but if the grid's down, then Facebook doesn't work. But I ha- I mapped it out on a piece of paper. Uh, but you still won't be able to know when your neighbors had sex. Well, no, no. I, I really didn't care about that. That was not the point <laughs> of this thing. I know I said I mean, that word. And If Jim and Sarah didn't have sex for three weeks, Jim might be getting ready to go post. He goes to the gun range. Yeah, yeah. So, um, But yes, um, anyway, so Facebook could be good. There, there's definitely things you can you can find out about a person's worldview and their persuasions and what they subscribe mm-hmm. to belief wise that would indicate what they might do in a grid down scenario and if you could count on them or even trust them. And you know what Facebook has never done? They've never a hand has never come out of the screen, grabbed me by the collar, and yeah. say, Post the photos of your dog today. Yeah. Or Tell me where you're going right now in Facebook. It's I, never done that to me. I'll actually go even beyond that. Like, I don't, it, it literally does come down to, I don't like people. I'm an introvert. <laughs> no, that's. I'm forced to handle the public on a regular basis. And honestly, to me, it's more like a science experiment because, like, my IQ is far up there. So I, I say <laughs> things and play with people just to kind of get reactions sometimes. But your actual IP address is out there for everything mm-hmm. unless you're using a VPN or a right. tour or something like that. But there's so much information that gets gathered from your everyday lives from groups like Cambridge Analytica. Right. That yeah, I wouldn't be worried about Facebook. I, I could care less. Apparently Trump and Mark Zuckerberg are having some sort of bromance okay. right now too. So I mean Awesome. <laughs> and if George Soros is angry, then right. by all means it's probably right. So needless to say, use technology for good. I would not install Facebook on your phone. There are some problems with that. But on a home computer with a photo of a dog you randomly found or something weird and don't put information about yourself on there. Oh, oh, and Uh-oh. big one. If you commit a crime, don't post photos of it on there. That happens. Or some of these guys have been streaming it as they're doing it. I know. Yeah, it's kind of stupid. Yeah. Yeah, so don't do that. But anyway, that's my that's another rant of preppers, and about some of the things that they don't. So ham the Facebook. What else you got? What else you want to complain about? How long have we been ranting? It's been a while. It's been an hour and ten minutes. We're ranting. You know what I don't like? What I, I don't know. <laughs> I just like saying it. Yeah, you know, and that's something that's kind of been on my mind for a long time. It's just really calling a lot of preppers idiots. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm sure no one that listens to this fine, you know, podcast is an idiot, but we have thousands of listeners. I showed you the numbers yeah. and that's not lying. No. I tell you that and you go, yeah. it's all me. I mean, <laughs> but it is, no. uh, you know, it's just, I'm really tired of the same conversations and, and it's, and it's where you hit a wall because I, here's the thing. Unless you're actually doing educational videos for very specific things like Engineer 775 or something like that. Everything that you see on YouTube is crap. I'll be honest. There's guys out there that they want to throw their opinion out there for everything. Unless you're actually teaching me how to do something, it's just it's your opinion. And opinions are like a-holes. Everyone has them. You've never been through this. You have no scenario. And even guys that have military experience, you have some experience in right. some things, but you've never experienced it here. Right. And it's going to be different. It's going to be dramatically different. And okay, another rant. And I've been on this. I've done. I've, I've. I do this one quite often. If your expert on YouTube doesn't talk about groups on a weekly or bi-weekly, he is just a skilled person. No, yeah. because being in a group is your most important prep. See, I won't even say a skilled person. I'm just going to say they're, they're an idiot. Okay. Because I, no, seriously, it's a numbers game. We live in a country of how right. many? 350 million people. Right. It is a numbers game. Oh. And people yeah. are like, I'm going to get my group of six. No, you need to be in a larger group than that. Yeah. Let's go, let's go start a nice little, little uh, fantasy prepper world here where right. you just put on your backpack and you're, you grab your AK and mm-hmm. you just survive for 50 years and have a fantastic Hollywood story written about you. That's nah, a bunch of crap. It is. I, I agree with that. I, I, but I do agree that, or I do believe that 
if your experts aren't talking about groups, and there's a lot of them that don't. They, I mean, I, the one website I went to, not one, I would look through all his videos. He's never talked about groups, but he talks about everything prepping. I'm like, then they go, oh, well, that's OPSEC. Oh, my God. I'm like, are you kidding me? Seriously? Um, Wait, I mean, ta- and you know who talks about OPSEC? That one guy that was ranting at the very beginning. The guy talking about, oh, oh be careful what you say, yeah. what you do, and they're all coming for it. Nah, shut up. Just shut up. No yeah. one cares about you. No one cares. You know what? I, you know, I got 10 ready-to-eat meals up there. Come and take them. Yeah. This, this isn't my stash. I mean, <laughs> local, This is not lo- my local stash. Local things that we've had. We've even had government employees. Mm-hmm. We'll just say that in law enforcement that have come and said, hey, you guys are doing a great job. Yeah. Three letter people yeah. have come to my meetings. Yeah. Yes. And there's there's nothing bad there. There's and they, nothing conspiracy. Not a thing. Just Americans preparing for what FEMA literally tells you to prepare for. Right. Exactly. So well, I'm not sure I can rant. I, I'm I, I've got to out. I've got to go watch a Hallmark movie after this. Oh. That's a <laughs> rant within itself. That's a whole other show. To feel better, man. Oh, I thought you meant you were literally going to go watch that. No. no. I got to okay. feel better, man, about people. And a Hallmark movie will make me cry. No, a Hallmark movie will make me want to break the television. <laughs> I, you, Your wife watches them, though, right? Uh, not that I know of. Oh. Lots of Grey's Anatomy. Lots of oh. Grey's Anatomy. Oh, That's a whole wife, other issue. My wife and daughter, I'll, I'll walk in. I'm like, oh, I'm going to my I'm going to my bug out. Yeah. And, they're, and they, I'll go, I'm going out. And they... They yeah. don't even say anything. Yeah, no. It's a horrible show. <laughs> Just lost 50% of viewers. No. <laughs> you know, it's a struggle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They Yeah. They understand. Yeah. Most of them. Um so well, anything any um I don't have anything else. I think that's it. I think that's a yeah. wrap. Yeah, I think that's a wrap too. I feel like I got everything off my chest. I feel like we're going to get some emails. Yeah, probably. Probably some hate mail. But, and I'm okay with that. Maybe a finger. A finger? Like in the mail. Moon River. Not that kind of thing. No. (laughs) (laughs) No. No. Okay. Well, hey, if you want to email us, you can go to preppingacademy.com. And there's a contact. And people fill that out quite often. And they tell me what they think, and I'm sure we'll get some. I know the ham radio guys. Is that what that trash can's filled with? That yeah, <laughs> all the emails I print it and threw it in there. Yeah. So hey, catch us weekly, preppingacademy.com, iTunes, Stitchers, all the different places. Kyle, you were amazing today. You just did. I mean, you a game, a game. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to thank my full throttle. <laughs> I've got. S- Unsweet tea oh. is what I'm drinking. Yeah. So, next to my Glock 43. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. well, you guys have a great week, and we will be back at you next week or the week after, sometime soon. And we will try to be positive. Yeah, you know, speak for yourself. I'm going to try. I may still rant more. I, I don't know. I feel you're, like. You're on this little kick right now. I am, because I've been doing this for so long. Mm-hmm. But don't you just, get encouraged by coming here, seeing some of my stuff? But it's your stuff. You know what I want? Um, I want people talking about it. Yeah, everywhere. I know my ham radios and my ant. I mean, anyway, okay. You guys have a good week. We will um, catch you another time. Preppingacademy.com. At least until May. Later. Thanks for listening to the Prepping Academy podcast. Preppers unite at www.preppingacademy.com. Has your data been hacked? Do you feel uneasy about the vulnerability of your personal information online? Were you involved in the Target, LinkedIn, or Microsoft data leaks? Don't know? If not, Then pay attention. Join Forrest Garvin from PrepperNet for a free webinar on privacy and security. Gain insights into safe internet browsing, VPNs, crafting online aliases, 
Secure emails, detecting if your data has been hacked, and managing passwords. Secure your spot today for this webinar on privacy and security. It's free. This webinar delves into comprehensive strategies for bolstering your online privacy. We've got you covered from fortifying your passwords to shielding your financial information and mastering state-of-the-art encryption techniques. We're offering two convenient dates to suit your schedule. Reserve your spot now at PrepperNet.com slash privacy. Don't let cyber threats erode your peace of mind any longer. Take the first step toward a safer, more secure online experience by joining us for our free webinar. Remember, knowledge is power when it comes to safeguarding your privacy. Sign up now at PrepperNet.com slash privacy. We'll see you there.